I want to pose a very simple question. What do guns tell us about character? See, in this world, there's two kinds of people, my friend. Those with loaded guns, and those who dig. Obviously, the very act of using a gun shows aggression. In addition, a lot of shootouts are associated with chaos and a lack of control. But I want to look deeper into it, because the gun that a character uses can say a lot about them and who they are. What's important to remember about movie props is how much care is put into them. There are professionals whose job is to ensure safety, historical accuracy, and if their job is done right, tell us about character. For example, in No Country for Old Men, one of Chigurh's methods of killing is his cattle gun. He uses this because he sees human life as worthless, the same way in which other people may view cattle. Or take a very extreme example like the Rambo series. Throughout the four films, masculinity is pushed to extreme lengths. For the majority of the film, Rambo prefers knives and bows and arrows. These are silent killers, however, following rage and aggression, he uses a Vietnam-era M60 machine gun. It's excessive to say the least, but it perfectly matches the extreme masculinity of the character in the film franchise. On the flip side, we have... Bond. James Bond. Bond's Walther PPK is a small semi-automatic handgun designed for concealed carry and has been a staple of the James Bond franchise in both the literary world and the cinematic entries. Walther PPK, 7.65 mil with a delivery like a brick through a plate glass window. And as he soon comes to find, it is the perfect weapon for the job, just like he is. Pulp Fiction has a severe contrast between the professional criminals and the run-of-the-mill robbers. Pumpkin and Honey Bunny carry two Smith & Wesson revolvers, a Model 30 and a Model 40. These guns are beat up, old, dented, and scratched. They can only afford second-hand weapons, which can oftentimes be unreliable. Meanwhile, Jules and Vincent carry shiny, semi-automatic pistols. Jules a nickel-plated 9mm Star Model B, and Vincent with a chromed M1911A. These are two very expensive and very effective killing machines, further emphasizing the hierarchy of crime that is found within the movie. What may be the most iconic movie gun of all time is the 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world. Eastwood's Harry Callahan carries a Smith & Wesson Model 29. To put it simply, this gun is overkill. And would blow your head clean off. But it also harkens back to the Wild West. Eastwood will forever be remembered for his contributions to the Western genre, and the Dirty Harry series pays homage to that. He's a modern-day officer with the morals of a Western sheriff, willing to bend the law to bring the villains to justice. I shoot the bastard, that's my policy. In full honesty, I think I could go on all day looking at different examples of the importance of individual guns in different movies, but if I could sum it up as simply as possible, it would be like this. Good use of guns is good world building. Guns tell us what we need to know about the characters, but it goes well beyond that, because guns are shaped by the same worlds that shape characters. John McClane carries a standard police issue Beretta 92F semi-automatic handgun, because, in the first few movies at least, he is just a standard police officer stuck in a series of bad situations. Thanks for the advice. It's also the same gun carried by Riggs in the Lethal Weapon film series, for similar reasons. His partner Murtaugh primarily uses his Smith & Wesson Model 19. Comparatively, the revolver is outdated, reminding us... I'm too old for this shit. Guns are not only an extension of character, but in some cases they can be characters in their own right. The rugged and worn down revolvers that Bonnie and Clyde carry are shaped by the same desperate world that shape these characters. Just like all elements of filmmaking, the importance of details matters when dealing with guns. When done right, they can bring a new sense of realism to the world, set the scene, and of course, tell us about character. So next time you're watching a movie and see a shootout, don't just look at what they're shooting, but ask yourself, why? Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed. I know this video was a bit different than usual, so please drop a comment and tell me what you thought of it and if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. I'm also interested in knowing what some of your favorite movie guns are and what they mean. 
Finally, I'd also like to direct you to my last video in which we looked at La La Land and what it says about dreams and reality. Thanks for watching.